Hi all, Kraken Latte here. Welcome to part 3 of my UI. In this one, we'll be tackling weak auras. This is the other big component of my UI, along with LVUI. Check out the previous video if you missed that. To preface this, I'm no weak aura expert, so I'll just be going over the ones I know how to make and what I use them for. My paste bin in the description below will contain all of my weak auras. They'll be named by class and spell so they're easier to find. I also want to point out that I answered the question of how I track cooldowns incorrectly in part 1. I track cooldowns in three ways, mainly with weak auras. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's get into it. To open the weak auras menu, type slash wa and you'll be brought to this screen. Existing weak auras, if you have any, are here on the left, while the option to make a new one starts here on the right. From here, you can either start from scratch or import one from somewhere else. To import, click either this bottom option here or this little button up at the top and paste the entire raw text inside. As an example, it'll look like this for my paste bin. Once you do that, hit Done, Accept, and it will now show in your list over here. Once you've imported a weak aura, you shouldn't have to mess with it. It'll just do its thing. To export a weak aura, right-click on it and hit Export to String. Copy all the raw text and paste it to wherever you're saving it. Now to make your own, you can start with any of these icons here, depending on what you're going to make. The easiest to explain are Icon, Progress Texture, and Text. I do have these others, but I'll go over those when we get there. Let's start with Icon. I use this in its simplest form as a cooldown or buff slash debuff tracker. Nightblade, from Rogues for example, is a debuff I want applied on my enemies constantly. I have this tell me when my target is missing this debuff. First, come over to the trigger tab. This is the most important tab as it's what makes this thing work. You have multiple triggers, but I keep this simple and use one. Buffs and debuffs are auras, so let's select that. Nightblade is a debuff, so check that. Now type in the name of your spell here, so it knows what to track. 98% of the time, the buff debuff name is the name of the spell, but if you try to do this and it just won't track it, go attack something and see what you applied. Now check Own Only. If you have this off, you can track other people's auras, but that isn't what we want here. Now since this is a debuff, I want it to tell me when my target is missing it, so we want Aura's Missing. You can also do the opposite and have the icon show when it's active if you want. And that's it for this part. Before we continue, I want to point out that Display, Load, Actions, and Animations will have virtually the same options for every weak Aura you make. So, you learn it once and you're good to go. I never use the Conditions and Custom Options tab, so I won't cover those. Okay. Now over in Display, this is how you change the icon's appearance. For the most part, I use Automatic Icon, which just shows what the spell is that it's tracking. If for some reason it shows as a question mark, or you want a different icon, just deselect Auto, hit Choose, and search what you want. Show Cooldown just does that. It'll put numbers on your icon to track its duration. In this case, I have it off since I'm tracking a missing aura, not an active one. The rest of this is easy. Height and width deal with the icon size, while X and Y are its position. I don't use the X and Y sliders though, as you can just grab the actual icon and move it wherever you want. I just leave anchors and stratas at default. Now just change text color and size if you want to have text on your icon. This here is if you want a more specific tracking on your text. Hovering over, you can see the developers gave it a nice tooltip that tells us exactly what to use, so read that and decide what you want. Oh, and if you don't see this text area, just hit Add Text down here to bring it up. And that's it for Display. Now for the Load tab. This is where you tell it when to show up and on who. I don't want my rogue stuff showing on other classes, so I like to choose Class and Spec. You can even pick specific characters and realms. Everything here is pretty self-explanatory. Just select the options you want to apply to your weak aura. On to the Action tab. This does multiple things, but I only use it for one option. Play sound on show. If you want your weak aura to make a cool sound when it pops up, just hit Play Sound under the On Show section and select your sound. You can loop it too if you really need it to get your attention, 
You can also choose what sound channel this will come from, but I just leave it on master. If you want to play a sound when it leaves, do the same thing in this section. The animations tab is also super easy. If you want your weaker to visually do something, that's this section. I only use the presets. You've got some nice choices for when it shows, leaves, and even its duration. And that's it. Pretty simple. Ta-da! You've made your first Wikara. Not so bad, now is it? I will show you the other kinds of Wikaras I've made, including the coveted class resources. But from now on, I'm only going to cover the types of Aura, Display, and Trigger. The other tabs work exactly the same way. Now for Progress Texture. This works pretty much the same way as Icon, it just looks a little different. You'll set up the Trigger tab much like before, but this time I'm doing a status. For this, it's a similar concept to what we saw for Aura, but this time we're tracking Demon Hunter Fury. That's Havoc's mana type resource. So, choose Status and then Power. You've got lots of options here, and a lot of this I'm sure you'll understand if you read it and think about what it could be used for. But for this, it's Power. Now select the Power type. You can easily make this for any class since they have it listed for us. We want Fury in this case. Now also select Power Percent. You don't need to put any parameters in, this just tells the texture to show progress percent in chunks. We'll be coupling this with a text weak aura, so we want them to be accurate. Now hop over to Display, and it's all the same as before except we want to pick our texture. No auto for this. You can do different foreground and background, but I just hit Same. Now just move it where you want it, size it, pick your orientation and blend mode, and you're good. I leave everything else as is, so make sure to look over it if you want something more. On to text week auras. These are incredibly easy. You literally set up the trigger tab the same way as the other week aura you're putting this with. In this case, it's the Demon Hunter Fury bar we made. This display is even simpler. Next, we'll cover how to make special class resources like Holy Charges for Ret Paladins. This will include two options from the start, Group and Model. It's actually surprisingly easy. I think you'll like this. First, make a group. Name this categorically as this will be the sort of folder that holds the models. Now with the group selected, add a model to it and you'll see that it becomes part of that group. It's important to know how many charges of your resource your class has. Red Paladins have 5, while Death Knights have 6, for example. But don't make more than one model. I'll show you a trick. So, select your model and go to Trigger. This should look familiar. You'll set this up almost the same as the progress texture. The difference here is instead of power percent, we're doing the power option above it. Select greater than equal to as the operator, and then 1 under power. This number represents how many charges you must have for this model to show. Basically, it's just numbering your charges, so this model is number 1. Now go to Display and choose a model. There is an insane amount of options here, but I usually choose models from Particles, Spell, and Spells. Take your time and really look at each one to pick what one you like for your class. Then play with the Z, X, and Y offsets to adjust the size. For the rest of the display, it's fairly similar except for this animate option. Unless you like stiff models, this is what makes these neat for class resources. Check this, and then slide through the sequences to choose an animation you like. Some aren't that different, so I promise you that this isn't broken if you change it and nothing looks different. Make sure to set the Load, Actions, and Animations tab the way you want. Then right-click on the model in the list here on the left, and hit Duplicate. Add the number 2 to this and move it where you like. Now go back to Trigger and change this to number 2. And then this one's done. See what we did? Now duplicate and adjust for as many charges as you need. Red Paladins in this case need 5. With all 5 individually spaced where you like, you can now select the group and move the whole thing where you want. And that's it! That's how I make my class resources. It's worth mentioning that you'd make progress bar and texture in the same way as the others. I just don't use them often. The only two progress bars I have are for Brewmaster Monk Stagger. I didn't make these. I got these from a friend in Wad who doesn't play anymore, and it looks too complicated for me to understand. The other two weakars that fall under that are Pet Health and XP Tracker. 
Like the stagger bar, these all use custom functions that are way over my head, so I'm afraid I can't show you how to make these. The last weak guard that's more unique that I did make is my cursor. This is simply a model, like the ret charges we made, that's anchored to the mouse cursor. The trigger I have set to greater than or equal to player health, simply so it's up all the time, except when I'm dead. And that's it! That literally covers how to make all my weak R's, except the few that I mentioned aren't mine. As a reminder, all of my weak R's are in my paste bin, including the ones I didn't make, all listed by class and spell. Thanks for sticking with me, and I hope you found this helpful! And that's it! Thank you everybody for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video! Please like it if you did, and tell me down below if you didn't! Hit that subscribe button for more coffee-fueled content, and remember, it's never too latte!